It's that time of year again. That time of year when the weather starts getting cooler. Well, I mean, it's still 85 degrees. And the leaves start changing colors. Or don't. And people, for some reason, decide to decorate large orange fruit with freaky faces and stick fire inside them. Actually, now I think about it, I kind of like this time of year. Of course, there is a problem with jack-o'-lanterns. As everybody knows, there's not enough fire inside them. Today, we're going to first see what happens when you put a very large fire inside a jack-o'-lantern. And then we're going to see what happens when you put a flamethrower inside a jack-o'-lantern. It's going to be fun. Let's get to it. Time to do some pumpkin carving. Dang it. There was no sun on that table a minute ago. Okay. Now, I will be clean, invincible, let's just get started. First thing to do, I believe, is to cut the tops of these open. Like, I haven't done this very much before, so, yeah, you just like, cut the top off. Perfect circle. Nailed it. Ugh. Ugh. That's nasty. You know, the thing most people do wrong with carving a pumpkin is they use the wrong tools for the job. I feel like that's an advantage I have over most people right now. That looks pretty good. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> nasty. I think I have to stick my hands in it. Oh. Why did I decide this was a good idea? Oh, that's gross. I think the trick is just not to imagine things while you're doing this. Just keep reminding yourself that it's just a pumpkin. Because otherwise it kind of feels like you're reaching your hand into a squid's brain cavity or something. And that's really not a pleasant thought to be thinking about. All right. Perfecto. Well, Jake's working on that. We're going to start on the flamethrower. Here's the parts you're gonna need. A disposable propane canister, a half inch by eight inch pipe nipple, a 3 8 inch air hose, half inch to half inch, male to male coupling thingamadoo, a switch or something similar to power the solenoid on and off, a quarter inch to half inch female both ends, one of those things that goes to this thing, another one of those things, the opposite end that goes to that thing, a couple of these funny thingies, one of these awesome converters that fits the propane tank, you screw that on and it converts it to a quarter inch male regular thread thingy, some sort of battery to power the solenoid, this is an 18 volt drill battery, the solenoid runs on 12 volts so this will do it. You will need a solenoid. This is a half inch to half inch um, rated to 140 psi normally closed solenoid and you're also gonna need some pipe thread sealing tape since we're not using gas pipe fittings which isn't exactly recommended but if we're careful and use a lot of thread sealing tape we should be just fine. Here's what it's going to look like when fully assembled. Pretty straightforward, I have the hose added in here. It's not extremely necessary, but just in case we need to kind of maneuver it around, I didn't want the tank screwed directly 
onto the rest of the assembly so it couldn't move. It would be fixed in that position and it might be harder to stick it where I want to. So I stuck the hose in there to give some extra flexibility. Literally, like flexibility. Not funny. We'll start by connecting the stuff up to the solenoid here. Most every solenoid is one directional, meaning you can't change up the flow input. As you can see, it has an arrow pointing to which side the flow needs to be going. So you need to remember to keep that in mind. Otherwise, it simply won't work or it might mess up the solenoid. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap thread sealing tape around this thing. And then screw it on. Go ahead and hook up the adapter with more thread sealing tape. Ugh. After tightening these things way too much, I'm sure I'm gonna have to take it apart for some reason. Hose barb screws right into there. First, we'll go ahead and connect our hose though. We're going to take the pipe clamps, slide it over the hose, better remember to do that, otherwise you won't be able to after you slide this thing on. Actually, you can slide it on the other side. Slide the hose clamp all the way up, about right there, and then screw it down tight. Oh yeah, that ain't going nowhere. Go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. Slide it on first. This hose is rated to 300 PSI. Propane, depending on the temperature, is generally upwards of 100, 120, depends on the temperature, but usually around there. So we've got way more rating than we need. Thread sealing tape. Singing makes it weird. Now we can go ahead and attach this part here to the front. I'm not even gonna worry about thread sealing tape because this part will not be holding any pressure. It's simply the nozzle for the flame. And that's pretty much it. The propane screws onto the back and then we'll wire up the solenoid and it will be finished. Yes, it was recording the whole time. Okay, now this is a normally closed solenoid, which means that until you apply electricity, the valve will remain closed. So, I'll go ahead and screw our propane tank in, and we're going to check it for leaks. Got a leak there. No leaks there. Okay, we've got a leak somewhere in here. So let's disconnect this and fix that. Probably just some thread sealing tape will do it. Yeah, I forgot about that. A lot of gas gets stored up inside here. So that was a small amount, so I'm not in much danger. Something to remember about propane though is that it's heavier than air, so it will sink down and lay in the corners or on the floor of the workshop if you have a propane leak. So it can just sit there for a while if you don't realize it until you light a spark or something and then the floor of your workshop blows up. Keep that in mind when working with propane. Be very careful, obviously. Okay, there are no leaks now. I went over the whole thing with a ton more thread sealing tape, just wrapped it around and around and around, went way overboard, and it's completely 100% leak proof. Yeah, that's what they said about the Titanic. Be sure you get this step right. Doing it wrong could have some very hot consequences. All right, now it's time to carve the actual face of the pumpkin. Let's start by drawing out what I want it to look like. Looks just like me.
All right, I have wired this thing up to a remote trigger. This sweet little apparatus right here, instead of a switch or something that I have to wire out a long ways, I can just push the remote and trigger the solenoid from like 100 feet away. Super awesome, I'll have a link to the setup in the description down below, as well as a link to the video of how to wire it up. It's getting dark out here, so the lighting is perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and hook this thing up and test it. Let's see if it works. Or rather, let's see how well it works. I know it works. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was way bigger than I was hoping for. <laughs> Sweet! Oh, that's awesome. Alright, come here. Is it safe? It's fairly safe. Just stay over there. Alright, stay there. Oh, I thought you were supposed to come over. Not quite over. Just watch. Uh oh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what is that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> what have you created out here? It's a flame shooting device. Yeah, it's definitely Whoa. that. Whoa. <laughs> Did you video us? Yep. Oh my oh, god! No. <laughs> hey guys, I'd like you to meet Georgie and Sam. Don't stare into Georgie's eyes for too long. Strange things happen. All right, first thing I'm gonna do to get some more fire inside is some of this uh, grill lighter stuff. I don't really know how flammable this stuff is, so this will be interesting. That stuff doesn't light. We're going to move straight to plan B which is gasoline. All right, now before anyone freaks out and calls their mom, or worse, my mom, I'm going to tell you I have a pretty safe ignition system rigged up here. I have got these two wires stuck into the pumpkin. You can see them down inside there. And I've got them connected to this wire, which runs down along the ground over to this stun gun so that when I turn it on and push the button, it zaps inside the pumpkin, as you can see. Perfectly safe. I'm gonna start off by putting just a tiny bit. All I want is some little flames. Okay, that was more than just a tiny bit, but. Okay, that was pretty much completely unimpressive. Um, the problem is there's not very much oxygen inside the pumpkin, so as soon as it burns and removes and burns all of that up, it just goes out. What I'm going to try now is to put a ton of gas in there and attempt to absolutely blow the pumpkin up. And I'm not at all sure if that's going to work, but I'm gonna give it a try. Well, no explosion. That's kind of what I wanted the first time, though. Look at that. Just putting the lid on puts it out. It lights up, but then it goes out immediately because it can't get enough air in there. All right, as you can see, I have got Georgie set up here. 
also connected to the taser because I think that the propane burst is going to blow out pretty much any other flame. And let's give it a go. This thing is cool. Why do I want a couple of these like flanking the doors to the shop? Like, you know, I see Zach coming out, try to tell me to come clean the kitchen or something. I'm like, ha ha ha. Even better than that, how about on some motion sensors? Like anytime someone approaches the door, just Oh jeez. All right, guys, that's about all I got for you in today's video. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As a bit of a wrap-up, we put more fire inside a jack-o'-lantern, and unfortunately, we're not able to get the pumpkin to completely blow up using gasoline, probably due to just the wrong amount of... Uh, the wrong mixture of oxygen to gasoline inside the pumpkin, so we weren't able to get that to blow up. Unfortunately, I was kind of hoping that would have been, like, really cool. But we did get more fire inside it, which looked really awesome, and we also put a flamethrower inside a pumpkin, which turned out great. I really want to try, like, hooking a motion sensor up to this thing. That would be a really, that would be, like, the next step for this, to hook a motion sensor up to it, and then figure out another way of igniting it so you don't have to uh, have a taser connected to it with wires. Um, so it's fully, like, remote ignition, or better yet, automated, like, completely automated with a motion sensor. That would be really cool. Someone should figure out how to do that. If you've got any comments, um, suggestions, critiques, or just want to let me know how awesome this was, be sure to leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Hit that like button, subscribe if, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll be seeing you in the next episode of Jake Makes. Jake out.